every stale bread has its rancid cheese. Oh, shit. <laughs> She's about to get people fired, yo, this week. Yeah, I was they just lock, like... They could lock your child in the basement. They could. She could be giving the other one good food. She could be poisoning him and his food so that he gets yeah. sick. Yeah, and even you know like... What I'm and even take her with son and be like, we're going out and leaving the stepson at home. What's happening, family? You're listening to the Unfiltered Lyman with BLT. Every week, we will reflect on our journey on trying to navigate between our parents' traditional culture versus American culture. Oh, gosh, boy. We are your hosts. Bertie, the Haitian sensation. Lisa, the Dominican diva. And of course, Terry, the tantalizing trini. Oh, yeah? No one is talking. So let's get unfiltered. Yeah, and oh, even yeah. with like her her family, and and again, I feel like also like I'm grateful, but I also like pray for adamant and prayer. Everything works out. But even with her family, I was like, they really just that was just the only grandchild for them for like how many years? They're like six years apart. You know what I mean? And they spoiled oh, him. So not. they took. It. Oh, they took him in. Perfect. This world just saw rotten, like even to this oh, point, okay. like yeah. So you know what I mean. So at no, the end so of the yeah. day, yeah, I have to remember that sometimes in concept, mm-hmm. like you know, you know, it's not always. But at the end of the day, that's one thing that I have to say when I look back or even looking at different yeah. things. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean. You have to take some, into perspectives yeah, and to what the contribution mm-hmm. that people, you know what I mean, um, mm-hmm. has. She, she might go a the little purpose is like she might, yeah, she might not like and me, but okay. at the end of the day, as mm-hmm. long as my son is taking... You understand what I'm saying? Like, Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's exactly, fine. Exactly. And, exactly. Yeah, and, I think, and I think with um, my stepdaughter, and, we, and she's a stepdaughter, but we weren't married, but mm-hmm. we lived together for a little while. But, I mean, she was always around. And um, I think her mother appreciated the fact, too, that it was like... I didn't have any kids, mm-hmm. but I treated her like my own. I brought her around my family. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Always like, let's mm-hmm. go do stuff. And you know what I'm saying? And she got to the point. She, would, Even if she was going out on a little date, she would call me, uh, Lisa, uh, do you mind watching me for me? Yeah, girl, come through. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, and then it, it got to the point that, like, even when me and the father weren't together anymore, anytime I had family functions or my family came through, mm-hmm. those two would they were there, mm-hmm. and it just became they became family. You know right. what I'm saying? So, and I know she appreciated that. You know, and right. all the way up to college, yeah. it's like, all right, yeah. what you need? Mm-hmm. What's on the list? You know, right? People will be like, <laughs> one of my girlfriends used to. What she call me? Jada Pickett Smith? Something like that she called me. <laughs> She's like, I don't understand what kind of relationship y'all all get along and stuff like that. I was like, yeah, actually me and the baby mama than, get along yeah. better than me and the father. I don't really care about him. Right. And I think that also shows the maturity of, and I think for me, that's the mindset. Mm-hmm. And I think like what you just said is because you set it up that way. Right. Mm-hmm. So I think mm-hmm. at the end of the day, sometimes that's why I get upset with the stepmom. It's like, honey, I, think, I don't want him. Like we could have mm-hmm. a cool thing, and mm-hmm. we could be. You understand what I'm saying? But the disrespect for me, like we not because the thing is, there's no compet. I I don't compete with nobody. I don't compete with women. Mm-hmm. I don't. But it's funny because it's a lot of her. times, it's her. Women compete with women mm-hmm. for no reason. Like mm-hmm. once I see you gonna compete me for me. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, oh, really? That's what we're doing? I just mm-hmm. step back because Bertie mm-hmm. don't, I don't, and it's funny because mm-hmm. you see it all around you and it's weird how we just automatically feel the need that we need to compete with other women. But from, I shut down. Like, that's one thing that shuts me down. Once you feel like you need to compete, I'm just going to be like, deuces. <laughs> I'm keeping yeah. quiet yeah. because I just can't do it. But I think at the end of the day, you also create an environment, Lisa, to be like, it doesn't need to be, you understand what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. it doesn't need to be that. We don't need to create that environment. Nothing was forced. It was right. so organic. It's like the first drop off was a 10 minute conversation. The second mm-hmm. drop off might have been a 20 minute conversation. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Then later down the road, next thing you know, she come to drop her off. Me and her sitting on the co- mm-hmm. couch, chopping mm-hmm. it up for like yeah. an hour, two hours. And he would walk in like, what the fuck is going on in here? 
But I think, like you said, it has to be organic. Organic, yeah. Yeah. You can't, because I I know for me, that's where where his dad just has that messed up big time, because he tried to force it. Like, he tried to be like, oh, I'm with her now. That's his new step, like, trying to make my son call her mom, trying to do all these stuff Mm -mm. that I was just like, "Mm, Mm -mm. you may be upset, but Negro, like, at the end of the day, like, so I think that's where... Mm-hmm. like the whole no. thing you understand what I'm saying like went wrong but the funny thing is I've heard people say it's weird how we think like how Jada Pinkett Smith and a lot of people and mostly they most of us black folks always call it the white thing right because white folks are mm-hmm. easier at doing this mm-hmm. if we really want to talk about it like just like look we're opening the door we kumbaya everybody's happy mm-hmm. but the thing about it is it's funny that we think that that's the weird part but then we don't think that the not putting the child first is not yep. weird. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, like- <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's about the child. Because I felt like, yo, she needed a... I mean, I didn't grow up in a home like that. Both my parents are still together. But I still felt like I had the common sense to be like, why does this kid need to be around a hostile environment? Because you know something? It's it's the, it's the ego of the parents. And especially it's the woman's ego of he is not with me because of her get past that or put that to the side because that's not the child's issue. Child doesn't have to be here. And once we focus on that Mm -hmm. and make sure that we need to nurture and make sure to put all the good stuff, all the things that this child needs for this child to grow into a productive human being, citizen, person, man, or woman, mm-hmm. then we would have so many better off children as opposed to these children that's all over the place. And I have to say, myself included, you know, that is just have all these issues and that, you know, sometimes they can't, it's hard for them to cope and go through life. And, you know, it's hard for them to be productive because they're so stuck. You know, it's again, those bricks that's weighing them down. So, so all these things, if we could be able to just put it to the mm-hmm. side as adults and say, I will deal with her or him on a different level, but keep the child out of this, then, you know, we'd be so much better. But again, we got our egos that's jumping in and um, mm-hmm. it's the constant back and forward. So guess what? The child gets, the child is the monkey in the middle and here we go. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's so funny because I know for me, because I've seen when my mom and dad's situation was all whacked up. So for for me, that was one of the things when we went through our stuff that I didn't want for Josiah. But at the same time, you can't control Correct. other people, right? At the end of the day, I think like you said, you have to do, we, we always talk about doing all work. Mm-hmm. And I think it's easier said than done. And the reason why I think a lot of times the child is in the monkey in the middle, because if you don't do your work... That's what happens. You could be doing your work and be with your child and showing your child that, yo, we're not perfect. Like for me, I use my life as my life is not perfect. So, yeah, all these things are happening. But my child was with Mm -hmm. me through the process because he needs to understand at the end of the day, the effort you put into your life, whether you think something is going to work out or not, it's up to you. You don't have to hide it from your children. You don't Mm -hmm. have to shun away from the children. Again, I think the perception that I've been surrounding myself with and listening to sometimes we try to portray this image in Mm -hmm. our family and our marriages that oh everything is perfect we don't argue we don't fight we don't do this we don't do that and our children go in the world thinking like yo and the first thing that they see that doesn't add up right because oh then they don't know how to go through and do the work you understand what i'm saying so at the end of the day yeah he's my child's you know, his mom and dad are divorced. But I tell mom, I'm not like, that's life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, guess mm-hmm. what? There's lessons. Those are the lessons. Because you also don't want to be in a situation where you know you shouldn't be in. That's not healthy. So sometimes we use our situation and we think like, oh, because this divorce is a bad thing. But not thinking to yourself right. like, he needs to learn the lesson. I learned the lesson. I could tell him what the lesson is. You don't need to be in a situation if it's not healthy, if it's abusive, mm-hmm. if it's this, if it's that. Teach the lesson so that the child can learn what the lesson is, be a strong individual, and be like, yo, these are the things you look out for. These are the things you could do differently. These are the things we didn't do. Mm-hmm. And move on. Instead of just like trying to be like, well you know hiding the truth and all because they search for the truth they know the truth they already know like yo my parents are not together but when you don't talk about the truth then what are they gonna 
have their misconception. It's up to mm-hmm. you to kind of like fill in the hole <laughs> and let them like, you understand, know, decide at the end of the day. I don't think, I don't know. I think sometimes as people, we don't, we like, like when bad things happen or mistakes or challenges will make choices we are so hard on ourselves like we really like you understand what i'm saying like i feel like why yeah, we are. We, you know what i'm saying like why are we, we are. hard you you're gonna have friendships they're gonna last they're not gonna last you gonna have relationship they're gonna last they're not gonna last you're gonna have children they may or may not disappoint you parents mate like people that's life like learn the lesson Take what you can from it. Love where you can. Let go of what you can. Just you understand, but it's hard. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's hard. No, Latita, I don't think it's hard. <laughs> you're right there, Terry. <laughs> Thing is, <so laughs> just the arm was just going down. I was like, oh, oh shit. I was like, oh shit, oh shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> I saw yeah. Lisa smile. Oh, was going down. That's not what she said. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yo, her whole mic is crashing over there. <laughs> <laughs> but wait, but you know something, B. I think that we're hard on ourselves. I think we hard on ourselves sometimes is unnecessarily. Um, you don't, you don't have to. Uh, just embrace. Mm-hmm. I think we don't want to embrace the failures because it makes us feel bad, like we're not a good person or mm-hmm. we just didn't do right. Okay, sometimes just things it doesn't work out. You know, everything in your life is not going to work out perfectly. And like you said, what is the lesson in that? Take that lesson mm. wherever it is and then you move on mm-hmm. to the next thing that you know that could make you great could make you better you know but don't don't relish in that negative as oh you know something i'm really i'm really fucked up i'm really this mm-hmm. and i'm really okay it didn't work out or this didn't work out as planned plan a didn't work out she didn't work out he didn't work out all right what is the lesson bam this is the lesson all right then let me just let me just keep it moving Mm-hmm. Just keep it moving. Because you're going to oh, repeat it until you learn the lesson. Oh, oh yes. yeah. Like, yeah, you Because know, like, yeah. the accountability for me is being able to say, like you said, Terry, I think what happens in our mind is when it fails, like if we choose somebody or if something fails, we want to not be accountable to we made the choice. Like, I made this choice. Like I used, I remember one time, and it's a funny story. My bad if I'm gonna put their business out there, but it is what it is. I can't, I cannot not tell it. <laughs> I'll put it out there because mm-hmm. it's a good example. It's a good Bumble. example, but it's just so Josiah's grandmother from his dad's side. She used to drink a lot, right? Mm. And I would say she was borderline alcoholic, but she was never diagnosed or whatever. When she used to go on her spells she used to just be very vicious right because you know things when they say when you drink things come out of you that you may have been holding and didn't know how to release it so she had a lot of stuff because of her life and her struggle and she's been through a lot that she went through so she was very vicious and stuff like that so i used like we had this conversation with me and his dad were like not even married yet talking about like at the end of the day we were trying to tell him that as bad as it seems she Mm -hmm. still is making a choice and he didn't understand it he was like no she's not she would never make a choice to do this and it's funny because he was adamant and I was like just like I'm choosing to love you he's like no loving people is not a choice you just love like he had a what? yeah like in That's his mind yeah but in his mind and there's a lot of people they feel like when you meet somebody you get the feeling you just attracted it's magnet it's not a choice it's just met yeah you understand like people really some people don't think like it's a ch- it's a choice because let me me tell you you could be magnetized to many people right but people don't believe that they're just like mm-hmm. in their relationships like it was just meant to be and they didn't have a choice because it was just like the attraction and the feelings no. and you know all this other stuff Mm-mm. but then he had a hard time realizing like even if somebody's like yeah they had a lot of stuff that they had to deal with your outlet is still choosing your outlet of how you're going to resolve it mm-hmm. right because we mm-hmm. all go through things i'm not trying to like be like oh all this stuff but i think like okay if you're putting people together and you're like okay i've been through the same thing that you've been through right or or life may be different but let's say our stories are similar right you have parents that were fucked up and all this stuff that you've been through and all this other stuff but i did i chose not to do the alcohol and the drinking and the sleeping around and all these other stuff that's a choice. Mm-hmm. I'm saying that my life is better because I had anger. So mine came out through a form of anger. You understand mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So the thing is, 
I don't think people realize everybody chooses unknowingly sometimes subconsciously what the outlet is I didn't know mine was anger until after I got my divorce I was like what the fuck like you know and then it started coming out and it was shown to me that it was anger like every time something happened it was just like I was like lashing out right Mm -hmm. but I can't judge somebody if they picked up a bottle. You understand what I'm saying? That's what their choice is. Like at the end mm-hmm. of the day, but I think at the end of the day, that's where a lot of times. Why did my friend? I was talking to somebody, and it was like the world doesn't really give a fuck. <laughs> they, no, it doesn't give. They don't. They you, don't. You, I don't know who they don't. It don't, don't. They were it like, don't, you can no. see, "Oh, this happened to me. This is why I do this." No, this nobody gives a that. shit. No. Oh my god, I'm so glad you said that. Oh my god, yo, I had to tell somebody one time. I don't know. It was after the fact. Something was going down with me. They was like, "Well, why didn't you tell us or whatever?" I was like, "Because nobody gives a shit." Oh my God, how could you think that? No, no, not really, because even me, myself, and I'm pertaining to work when I'm, this is what I'm referring to as work, is that, because even at work, like if someone tells, comes and tells me something, I'm like, okay, I'm going to listen, all right, I empathize, or like, I'm sorry to hear that and stuff like that or whatever. But if you keep on going on with it, at some point, I'm like, yo, I don't give a fuck. Are you going to do the work or not? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm with I you mean, how- 100%. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to be empathetic for you. I don't want nobody to have to go through anything and stuff. But at some point, if you keep dragging on about the shit, at, I don't give I'm a gonna fuck. Pray I'm going to pray for you because my thing is, um, because I think it also has to do with like, and I have to understand, like, not every problem needs to be solved. Not everybody wants their problem solved. They want to wallow in that. And it's okay. Oh my God. So my oh thing my is, God. I had to distinguish, like, okay. I know a wallower. And Lisa, I mean, Terry always says it. Not everybody is like us and think like us. All day. Right? Mm-hmm. So the thing mm-hmm. is, it's okay that they want to sit in this pot of shit, in this pot of puddle or whatever. It's okay. I just have to be like, you know what? I'm going to pray for you while you sit there, but I'm going to walk all. I'm going to walk yes. over this puddle because mm-hmm. I can't. Yo. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. Yo. Yo, I mean, no, you know, the, what? the generation Women coming up, though, needs because I have to tell Josiah that all the time because yeah. I'm like, OK, he's a nice looking black, black young man. He's smart as hell. Right. But sometimes he doesn't want to give all that he should because he just feels like, oh, I'm smart. And, you know, it's going to come easy to me. And I have oh, to be yeah, like, no. Son, do you know that nobody gives a fuck? Yeah. You had to tell him that. I was like, all your little teachers, all these little girls, all your little friends that think, oh, you so smart, you so handsome, you so cute. They don't give a fuck because guess what? At the end of the day, you do one, one bad thing and everything that you think that everybody's being nice and everybody's doing this, they're going to be like, oh, you just another black man being a statistic so guess what at the end of the day you got to do more you got to put in the effort you have it comes easily to you yes because you have natural gift but you still have to do the work to evolve you understand what i'm saying so yeah i have to tell them that all the time because these kids nowadays they just don't think that they have to put much effort exactly. i was like well okay so let me ask you something you said that about hold on a second you said something um like the world does not give a fuck Mm-hmm. Is it the whole world that doesn't give a fuck, or do you think it's like a cultural thing? Hmm. I think it's, hmm. and, I've, and I've heard this before from, I've heard this before from financial um, motivational pe- speakers. They go when you ask people, and they give this example when you are when you ask people how they're doing for the day, right? They go ask people how they're doing, and their first is, "Well, I'm doing great," right? But let's say you change up the word. People don't listen to what you, they don't really care. You know, it's like, have you ever asked somebody how they're doing and they don't say they're okay? They say something totally different. You're like, wait a minute. Yeah. You ever done that? But we're yeah. still programmed to be like, oh, everybody's okay. So you're walking. You just move on. So that means you don't mm-hmm. give a fuck to what the answer I'm trying to give you. Because I could mm-hmm. be like, oh, blah, blah, blah. Because you're just so normally, right? So I think mm-hmm. at the end of the day, as a, our selfish nature is what we say, because as people, we mm. have a selfish mm. nature. Oh, my God. But I don't think it's cultural. It I think it's people in general. Like, we try to, but we have a selfish nature that we don't want to, I don't want 
want to say we don't want to, but we have our own problems, right? So why are we going to put other people's problems? <laughs> like, I don't really want to. Yeah, we have our own problems, but I, I feel like, I guess for me, because I always try it, even like if I say I have to call customer service or something, when mm-hmm. I'm calling Verizon, I'm calling the gas company, whoever I'm calling, right? Mm-hmm. I always like, and I don't know if I got this from the hospitality industry, I always like to be like, how are you doing? Mm-hmm. I don't mm-hmm. know these people. But, you know, it, I feel like it changes the tone of the conversation, right? Mm-hmm. It's the same thing as, you know, you say good morning. You lead with a conversation by saying good morning because it, it, it comes off to me as you being selfless, mm-hmm. right? Good point. But I have a problem with those that, that just go off onto this rant mm-hmm. and then keep going. It's like, oh, okay, I'm sorry to hear that. I hope things get better or whatever. But then they just keep going. Mm-hmm. And they just keep going. And I'd be like, all right. Then there becomes a point where I'm like, yo, I don't give a fuck anymore. Let's just, let's get to the bottom of the problem. Mm-hmm. Am I wrong for that? But, but Yes, because that's your perception. There might not be there. They, they may need two days. I mean, I'm not saying you're wrong. That's your, and that's okay for you to feel, but understanding that that person may need a month to still vent mm-hmm. it out until they get to that. Because you can't tell them their time frame. Exactly. That's the thing. I think sometimes because we may process things differently, but you can't tell them. And that's what I had to learn. Like at the end of the day, and I guess maybe is looking at, you know, children development and all this. If you have multiple children, right? They all don't learn or don't respond to the same kind of things the Correct. same way. No, they don't. So you have to adjust. You understand what I'm saying? So I can't yeah. expect child A to respond. You know, if they respond to 30 minutes of me just lecturing them and child two, I might need to whoop their behind for about 30 minutes <laughs> and child three may be a combination right. of both. I have to learn which one, but I can You understand what I'm saying? Like, let's just be honest. So, so. I think... At the end of the day, as a parent, you just need to learn, like, you know, just as people to deal with people, how they come and not have the expectation of what okay. you would. You know what I'm saying? It's okay. kind of like. Okay, so the solution is that basically don't lead with how no. you're doing. Unless no, you, know, no, you don't give a fuck. So let uh-uh. me tell you this. So for me, let me tell you this story. Uh-uh. <laughs> I'm just saying, right? So for I'm me, showing, I'm showing some consideration at first because that's what I would like to see also, too, because we live in a selfish world. Right. right. So I'm trying to show something different. Be but I'm careful. Not the I would therapist. say be careful. The be careful who you're showing it to, because not everybody deserves your energy. You also but, don't but, have to be nice to everybody. So no, I'm not. Wait, 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 so, wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, <laughs> wait a minute. I, 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 I I don't 100% agree with thee. <laughs> no, I don't 100% agree with it. We're going to table this one here. This one getting hot. We need a part two for this. Let's ride out to the part two. Oh, tight. Oh, tightest. Oh, tight. All right, people. The Bacchanal Queens, we are ready to linger. But before we linger, we would like to thank you for joining us this week on Unfiltered Lyman with BLT. Check us out on Instagram, Twitter, and join our Facebook page. As always, subscribe to the show to catch every new episode and leave us a review so we can continue to bring you fresh, exciting content. See you next Thursday, same time.